Shalom, brothers and sisters. This week's Thursday's thought, I'm going to revisit the topic of the Antichrist. I, I really don't want to, but as you know, sometimes if I get enough good questions, concerns, then I will. I want to preface this, though, by explaining why I am revisiting this. In the media of late, there have been certain celebrities, one in particular comes to mind, but there's more than one that does that has done this, that basically, well, the one in particular I'm thinking of ruined their career by attacking a particular group and a group that has been violently attacked, and that is the Jews. They, they went through the Holocaust, and this person, this, this celebrity was saying that they, they don't like Jews, they, they like you know, Nazis, but they don't hate Jews. It, does, it didn't really make any sense. I, I, I did for a little bit try to follow it, but it was just so confusing. I was like, this is just a mess. You guys, you know, whatever you want to say, buddy, I, I don't understand at all. So I don't want to address that particular person but some of the ideas that were coming to me about the the Antichrist, the Hollywood version of the Antichrist, were really based in the same bigotry, bias, uh, anti-Semitism, and, and things of that nature that this particular celebrity was endorsing. So I, I want to talk about a couple of things here. First, I want to share one of my own stories, something that happened to me. Um, to, to talk about this topic. And then I want to get into why and how Satan uses fear to divide us as Latter-day Saints, as Christians, as people of God, as people of the Abrahamic faith, faith, plural, I should say. So I want to start off, when I was younger, in my uh, early to mid-20s, I believe, I was attending a local protestant church occasionally it was one of the things where like one week i was going there and one week i was going to the salt lake city church the the branch there that, that, that uh, i belong to and they got into this topic of the end of the world which at that age i was very fascinated with and they began talking about this thing called the rapture i had never heard of the rapture before it's not in the scriptures uh, for those that are unfamiliar i'll just tell you quickly that around the same time that mormonism was started the latter-day saint movement Form, was formed in Europe. There was a, I believe, a 13-year-old girl, and I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Sorry, I do these from the cu off the cuff. Um, but she basically was part of this this group that evolved into evangelical Protestantism, and she had a a she. I guess she had visions, and one of the ones she had was this vision of the rapture. Now she did not. There were some theologians that had an idea of a rapture before her, but she's the one who popularized it in the movement that grew into what is evangelical Protestantism today. And, and that this idea spread, although most people don't talk about the, the this young girl that started it, the, the idea, and really popularized the idea, I should say, they basically took a lot of scripture verses you know, cherry picked and try to make her, her, her revelation or her vision sound correct. And so now what, what, what I experienced going to a Protestant church was these people teaching the ideas that were formed through this vision of this 13 year old girl. And, and I, I can't fault that because I belong to a religious movement that was started by a young boy who was 12, 13, 14 years old and had visions. So, you know, I, I'm living in a glass house. I'm not going to throw a stone, right? That said, as I said last time in the last video, fear is one of the tools that Satan uses to divide us. And this fear of the rapture that was coming. And, and my thought was, well, I, I was about to give you my conclusion, and I don't want to get to that. That's That's jumping ahead too soon. My immediate thought was fear. What if I'm wrong? What if the God I'm talking to is the angel of light and I've been deceived all of my life? I, I really went through a faith crisis over this. So I don't want you to think that this was something that I simply read, thought this is ridiculous and moved on. This is something that I spent a, a good amount of time studying, starting with the Bible alone, going to the Lord and trying to look at this both rationally and spiritually because 
I want to look at it rationally in case the the entity I was speaking to wasn't really God. I believe it was God. I believe that I made covenants with God. But, but what if? The, these Protestants had me questioning my faith. That's, that's the power of, of fear. And so going to the Bible and studying these things out, I took each scripture verse by verse, just like I had done with the anti-Mormon literature I had been given in high school. And I saw that, well, I mean, if you put these together in a list, it tells a story. But if you look at each one individually, it's not telling me the same story. And again, I'm taking this to the Lord. And finally I got to the point where I was like, God, you know, I, I, need, I need more data. I need more information. I need to be able to look into this deeper because in a superficial way, I can see how you can twist these scriptures. But are they twisting them? Did this girl have a legitimate... Well, I, I should think it's back. I didn't know at that time it was a 13-year-old girl. I learned that that later. Um, but I, I did believe in Revelation. So I was wondering, did someone read these scriptures and receive some sort of revelation that explains some deeper meaning? So clarifying that there. The response the Lord gave me was, this is why I sent out the Book of Mormon and the revelations and the Doctrine and the Covenants, so that there would be more than one witness. Because the Bible is translated by one branch of Christianity. I mean, you have a Catholic Bible, and you've got your Protestant Bibles, lots of them. But either way, you really have this kind of Catholic to Protestant view when the Bible is being translated. So even though you have an Old and New Testament, and that is two witnesses, the translation is com coming from a particular perspective, just like the Book of Mormon and the way that the Doctrine and Covenants are put together are put in another perspective. And so what I felt the Lord was telling me is, let's look at this other perspective and put it with this perspective and see what we can get together, merging these. And so I did. And I came to a conclusion based on the information that I had that the rapture was not going to happen. But that didn't stop me from panicking. And so through a lot of prayer, I finally came to the conclusion that if I am truly right with God, it doesn't matter what church I belong to. If there is a rapture and I'm wrong about it, then grace is going to protect me. If there is no rapture, then it, it, it really doesn't matter. So I basically put my fate into the Lord's hands, knowing that there was nothing that I could do at that point. Now, the story that I was told when I asked about the rapture, they gave me a little pamphlet, and the pamphlet had this story about this, this man. And, and this, there are several different pamphlets I was given, so I'm going to go over a couple of them. One of them was about this man who shows up out of nowhere. He unites all the political parties, he unites all the world religions, except for the Christians. And I'm using Christians in air quotes because the Protestants like to think that they're the only Christians. And in the book, of course, the Catholics, they're, they're, they did not see them as Christians, and so therefore the Catholics joined with the other world religions, whereas, and, and so did some false Christian churches, other Protestants that Protestants don't like, basically. And and they joined in this world religion, and so none of them were taken up when the rapture happens, because the Antichrist was able to deceive them. And the other one I had was this man from outer space coming, which I found to be utterly ludicrous claiming to be the second coming of Jesus Christ. I this, this, uh, came from outer space because Jesus was an alien, appeared to unite all the world religions. So similar story, but now it's an alien. And I read some others, but they were all kind of similar. But the, the main thing here was that this Antichrist was going to be one person, that they were going to have power to unite people, to create peace, and that they would they would have the signs of miracles. Well, that's very problematic. 
because God is trying to restore all things, right? So as part of the restoration, the Lord is trying to bring the peace of Zion. And over time, I was able to see the deceit here. Satan is not a unifier. When you look at the various Antichrist in the scriptures, they aren't all working together as one big happy family. The Antichrists are here to divide us, to make sure we don't bring peace to the earth, to make sure we don't unify. And so, yes, I, I am going to contradict this idea. Now, what does this have to do with anti-Semitism? One of the, the things that people asked me about was the Rothschilds. They have this magical ability to control weather, which is a ridiculous urban legend started because this family of bankers were good at their job. And I don't know, maybe they're good people, maybe they're bad people. That's irrelevant. But the bottom line is that they don't have magical powers. They just have a lot of money. And so they are the root of a lot of conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories exist because people want to find reason and meaning for things that they don't understand. And they also exist as a means to control people. So if someone comes up with a conspiracy theory and someone else might use it to try to control people. We've got to unite as a tight, small group against this, this group of bad people. And we saw that happen with the conspiracy theories in Nazi Germany. And we see it today with people who try to pretend like the concentration camps, the Holocaust, didn't happen. We know the Holocaust happened. There's evidence. There's a Holocaust museum. The Jews have been treated horribly. And to be quite blunt, it is Christianity's fault. For centuries, Christians were persecuting Jews to a point to where when Germany decided to make them the bad guys, it wasn't really that difficult because they were already the bad guys. There was all sorts of crazy conspiracy theories. Jews wear hats to hide their horns and just ridiculous stuff like that. Jews eat Christian babies. I mean, this is just ridiculous stuff that isn't true. And we see it today with ridiculous political conspiracy theories with the idea that politicians eat babies. It's Satan, who is the Antichrist. If you want to have one sole Antichrist, it's, it's Satan. He is the great liar, the father of all lies. Going out here and spreading this message of hate and dissension. One question I get asked a lot, I mean, I, I consider myself to be a Messianic Mormon. What does that mean? I, I celebrate. The, the holy days are in the Bible. I believe that Christianity is really nothing more than a branch of Judaism that was overtaken by people who aren't Jews and so therefore tried to distance themselves from their own religion. I, I Even as a child, I didn't understand. We have all these holy days in the Bible that line up with all these things that we're doing, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter. Why, why aren't we doing it the way it says to do it in the actual scriptures? Well, now I do both. The reason why is because in order for some people who, who don't know how to create an us, they create an us by creating a them. They don't realize that Jews and Christians and even Muslims all worship the same God because we are all, and there's other religions too, that come from that Abrahamic background. And so we are all brothers and sisters of the same faith. The Antichrist, Satan, and conspiracy theories try to turn us against each other, knowing that we all worship the same God. God wants to bring peace. Satan it will do everything in his power to stop it. But in the end, God is going to win. We already know that. 
And with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and address another topic that was brought up about the video I made. People were angry and upset that I not only quoted an apostle from the Salt Lake City Church, but I also testified that he was speaking as an apostle in that moment. We're an ecumenical movement. Why would I not do that? Again, only Satan seeks to divide us. The Salt Lake City Church, yes, they like to pretend that they're the only true church. Obviously, I disagree with that. But I'm not going to commit the same, I'm going to say, error by pretending that they are not a part of the Latter-day Saint movement. They're a huge part of the Latter-day Saint movement. They're probably the only part of it that most people are aware of. By trying to exclude various branches of our shared faith, we do nothing more but create the same conspiracy of us versus them that every other group is trying to find their own niche but can't do it on their own does. Exclusion is the simplest form of divisive unity. That's not what the fellowship is seeking to build. We are seeking to build unity in Jesus Christ. I was recently at a baptism at the Salt Lake City Church's, one of the, one of the local branches. I wasn't there to say, oh, don't do it. I was there to celebrate a soul coming to Jesus Christ through a branch of our shared faith. My dream is to get to a point to where all the Latter-day Saint churches and Christianity in general can do that same thing and have that true joy in their heart when they see people coming to Christ and not have that jealousy that they're going that they're coming to Christ in a different branch of our shared faith. So this idea, this conspiracy theory idea, this Hollywood idea of the Antichrist, I hope that this helps address that in a little bit more detail. And my, my main goal here, to be very clear, the thought I want to leave you with is, how can we stop looking for ways to divide each other? How can we walk away from the message of the Antichrist and his division and lies and deception? And how can we love one another in Christ a little more? How can we stop pointing fingers and instead open arms? I'm not going to judge the Rothschilds. I don't know them. I hope they do good things with their money. If they don't, I don't really have any control over that. I love our Jewish neighbors. I love Judaism. It is a beautiful tradition and religion and a beautiful people. I don't like what certain fraction, certain factions of it are doing to Palestine, but I still support them as a people and even as a nation. I just hope that they can learn to love with open arms and find ways to peaceably fix their differences with their neighbors and learn to love their neighbors and love their enemies as Christ taught. Yes, I know that they're not Christians. I hope that we as a people can see past these deceptions. That's my thought. And I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.